Hi guys, this is Sean from ACID Education and today we're going to talk about two important things in punctuation which are commas and semicolons. Whenever I check writing for any English exams, university, college, or any articles, uh, and especially when people are writing for the IELTS and CELPIP exams, we make mistakes on commas and the semicolons are, well, they bar we barely use it, which is wrong, we should. Um, and that's where a lot of marks are lost in grammar when you don't know when to use the right commas. So today we're going to discuss the eight rules uh, as to where we have to use commas. Also, these rules will make you use more commas even where it's optional and you should use it there. Because even when commas are optional and you start using it, you show the examiner that you know the usage and the rules behind using commas. On top of that, I'm going to talk about semicolons here because semicolons are written by advanced users. So people writing newspaper articles or blogs, they use semicolons. So if you use them in your exams, you're showing the examiner that you have a higher level of writing. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, there are sentences, I'll give you some sample sentences which are written in my blog. So again, the link of my blog is in the, the description. Everything that I say, mostly I write it down on my blog, so it's much easier for you to follow. So you can subscribe to my blog as well as my YouTube channel for amazing tips and comments like these. The first condition with commas is when we use it with independent clauses. So let's say we're saying two different things and we're connecting them with and, or, but, and these kinds of conjunctions. We, we can use a comma there. Let me show you an example. He walked down the street, comma, and then turned to the right. Okay, so here I'm gonna use and because there are two situations. One is he walked down to the street, the second is he turned to the right. So whenever there's two situations which are slightly different, you can use commas with and or but and, and similar conjunctions. However, if I say that I'm buying milk and cheese, I won't put a comma there because these are two very close points. They're not really separate stories. They're not independent clauses. We use this with independent clauses between conjunctions. Uh, point number two is using a comma after a brief introduction. So let's say you introduce something and then you have to add some more material to it. You can use a comma. For example, near a small lake at the bottom of the canyon, comma, we saw two campers. So there's a little intro there and then continuation of that story. So after a little intro, you can use that. Point number three is in a list of items, which is the most common thing. I think this is something that everybody does correctly. So I need to buy um, milk, comma, cheese, comma, eggs, comma, pepper, and so on. Now, how we finish is important because that's where mistakes happen. So I want to buy milk, butter, cheese, etc. And so then at the end, I'm saying and uh, chicken. Now with and chicken, before the end, you have to use a comma as well. Grammatically, it's correct to use a comma before and. Okay, so use it there. Or if you're saying etc., you have to use a comma before etc. So don't ignore the comma with the last thing. That's the usual mistake with this. Uh, the next one is when you're giving extra information. So this is the fourth rule. So for example, let's say my friend Bob is an entrepreneur. Bob is not important here. I could just say my friend is an entrepreneur. But because I'm giving the name Bob, it's an extra piece of info, I'm going to put a comma before and after Bob. So my friend, comma, Bob, comma, is an entrepreneur. So any extra information could be put in between commas. Uh, another example is, um, well, it's not here. I could, I could, for example, mention that today I went to a nearby park, comma, national park, comma, and I had a lot of fun. So here, national park is an extra piece of info, and I can put that in between commas this way. Next is with AKAs, or also known as, for example, uh, the Blue Jays. Blue Jays is the Toronto's baseball team. So if I want to give this info, and you know, I can call them the Toronto's baseball team, or I can call them the Blue Jays. What I'll do is put a comma when I introduce something which has a second name. For example, the Blue Jays, comma, Toronto's baseball team, comma, will be playing again this year. So because I said the Blue Jays and Toronto's baseball team, which are basically the same things, I have to put a comma between them. And this shows that I could use either or, but I'm using both just to be more elaborate. 
Number six is when you're referring to people. So let's say you're talking to someone. Um, you, you're saying, Bob, I think you are wrong. So you're, you're gonna put a comma after Bob. Bob, comma, I think you're wrong. So it's used with people. Another example is, I think you, Bob, are wrong. So here, before and after Bob, we're gonna put commas because with names, when you're referring to people, you put commas. The next situation is with quotations. I think, again, this is something we learn at school. For example, Mia said, comma, quotations, I hate being at this party, quotations. This is with inverted commas, okay? So Mia said, comma, and whatever she said, or she said, whatever, let's say you say, inverted commas, I hate being at this party, inverted commas, comma, said Mia. Okay, again, guys, this is all written down in my blog. The link is in the description. Please look at that because it's going to be much easier to follow. The eighth condition is with dates and addresses. So if you're saying January 13th, 1980, you don't need to put a comma after January. You put the comma after 13. January 13, comma, 1980. And then comma, and then continue. So after the day and after the year, you have to put a comma. With addresses, it's going to be every time you go to a different uh, part, a different section of the address. For example, 718 Mac Street, comma, Georgia, comma, and then the province. Okay, so when you're doing the street name and number, no commas there, not like 718, comma, but you say 718 Mac Street, comma, then the city, comma, then the province. And if you're putting the country, then province, comma, country. Okay, so with each section, you put a comma. Now, these things are extremely important for you when you are writing and gaining your marks for grammar. If you don't do any of these eight rules, you'll lose marks. Now, let's talk about gaining marks. How do you gain marks? You gain marks with using fancy punctuation marks. The fancy punctuation marks are used with the help of semicolons, exclamation marks, inverted commas. Today, we're gonna to talk about semicolons and the rest maybe in some other video. Semicolons can be used in three ways. And I really suggest you use it in your writings to gain more marks. Uh, it's gonna show the examiner that you're an advanced writer and you will be rewarded for that. So situation number one is when you're breaking down two clauses, independent clauses. For example, Mike and Sarah are well prepared to take over the team, semicolon, let's give them a chance. You see here, we're having two points. One is that they are well prepared to take over. The second is let's give them a chance. This could be in a completely separate sentence, but we wanted to make it together to show that these points are related. When you do it together, you can put a semicolon to separate them. So this is useful in, in a lot of applications. Whenever you have two very similar points, you can group them together with a semicolon. Example number two is with conjunctions. So let's say I'm saying Bob is really good at public speaking. Furthermore, he can also play sports as well. Now, I can put furthermore in a new sentence, but I won't because I want to be fancy. I want to gain my mark for punctuation. So I'm going to say, Bob is really good at public speaking, semicolon, furthermore, comma, he can also play sports as well. This way, whenever you have a conjunction, you put a semicolon, conjunction, and a comma, it becomes fancy because only people who are really advanced in writing will ever do this. Number three is with conclusions. Example here is, the new business plan shows a lot of hope and can be the next big thing. Semicolon, let's get started on it. So the idea was it's a good business plan and the conclusion is let's get started on it, okay? So because there is a result, there is an ending, you can use con semicolons with conclusions. It shows more of a finish, more of an extra point which aims to, to finishing the whole idea. That's it guys, so I hope these rules make it clear to you now on how to avoid mistakes in writing and how to gain marks by trying a little risk with the semicolon. Uh, for proper usage, you can Google more examples, you can comment here if you have any questions, and I would love to see some sample sentences. If you guys wanna try making some sample sentences, put them in the comments, I'll try my best, give it time and evaluate, and make sure you're using these things correctly. Until next time, guys, I'll talk to you again very soon. Uh, probably the next lesson will be on vocab. For more tips and tricks, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, turn on your notifications for great tips and updates on whatever we upload. Thank you and take care.